Yeah, there. And then the good Elsa's back in town. Yeah, oh, yeah. Good yeah, right, right. Well, we got a lot to talk. I just did a program with the uh, Educational Alliance, you know. It oh, aired last week. Yeah, they were there since 1879. And that yeah. that area, the Lower East Side, is such a rich tradition. I mean, in terms of art and that kind of stuff. And uh, you're yeah. continuing in that, you know. Yeah, the Educational Alliance used to be much more functional in a lot of ways. It had, uh, yeah. it had like an artist group there, like Artist Talk and Arts, and yeah. really in the 80s. Yeah, was, well, they're, they're right. still following that, but let me introduce you, okay? And then we'll get into a conversation about that and other things. And it's uh, welcome to Conversations. A pleasure to welcome to the program an old friend of Conversations and the host of Conversations, uh, and that being uh, Clayton Patterson. And uh, he's an artist and a documentarian, and he uh, resides in the Lower East Side, and he's documenting it, with extreme responsibility, uh, the uh, intellectual and uh, cultural life of the lower and political life of the Lower East Side, that rich area. And uh, Clayton, welcome very much to Conversation on this a couple of days after your wife Elsa just returned to New York City. And, ah, thank you, Harold. Yeah, that's a good event and yeah. so forth. So we're going to want to talk about uh, your books. You've got publications coming up now that you're doing, <coughs> and we're going to want to talk some about that and, uh, and the Lower East Side. But I wonder, maybe you could, because we've got, we've got a whole hour here, and maybe you could, because you've been on in the past, and we're, we've done programs together, you and I, and so forth. But maybe you could share with the audience your own background. I guess you're, you're originally from uh, Alberta, is it? or where Yeah, originally from, from uh, yeah. Western Canada. Yeah. Uh, came to uh, New York in 1979. I had uh, taught high school uh, previous to that, and uh -huh. taught um, art college, and uh, was interested in art and uh, life in America and came to New York and uh -huh. uh, really as many been, people do yeah. as many people do yeah. and uh, came to the Lower East Side and have been there ever since and mm -hmm. have spent a number of years uh, documenting the Lower East Side with film and video mm -hmm. as well as making art and uh, running a little gallery called the uh, Clayton Gallery and uh, putting together something called the Outlaw Art Museum. Outlaw Art, Outlaw art Museum. Museum. Mm -hmm. And really what that refers to is not just um, things pertaining to criminality, but also yeah. like court cases that have challenged the law. Oh, yeah, you've been involved in a number of those. Yeah, you've been, been called in as, uh, yeah, because you've done some videotaping of events uh, and so forth? Street documentation, yeah, mm -hmm. like I did the uh, Tompkins Square Park uh, police riot, uh -huh. uh, which I was uh, put in jail for. So that kind of action is an example of some of the art that's part of the uh, Outlaw Art Museum. In yeah. other words, that was just a person doing street documentation. Street documentation, as with Rodney King. Uh, as mm -hmm. in, in the Rodney King. This mm -hmm. uh, predated Rodney King. Yeah. Got uh, six officers indicted, and the captain moved out of the precinct, and the chief retired. And really, that was the uh, end of the Koch years. And at that time, if you can remember New York, it's hard to sort of put things back into categories. Yeah. But uh, at that time, the police department was... Um, like the rest of the city, the city was in complete ruin. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, you couldn't even buy a Rolls Royce anymore in New York <laughs> because the, even though the, the Rolls Royce dealer had moved out, <coughs> now, the city was really in shambles. And uh, so was the police department, and uh, a tremendous amount of corruption in the department at that time. A lot of drugs in the city. Mm -hmm. And the uh, police riot tape that I'd taken, which was August 6, 7, 1988, really showed the amount of chaos that was in the police department. And yeah, that was a mess, wasn't it? It yeah. was a complete mess. Yeah. And really, the, the, uh, the tape, the, the most critical shot on the tape probably was um, the white shirts chasing the blue shirts down the street. It's yeah. true that on that tape, a lot of people, I caught people being uh, beaten up by the cops for no apparent reason and no arrests were happening. Mm -hmm. And so their people were just arbitrarily beaten and were let go, and that was part of the chaos. But to realize that this event took place over a whole night, and that there were chiefs and high-ranking officers there, and, you know, officers had their hats on backwards, they didn't have badges, the uniforms were totally out of sync, uh, sometimes they switched badges. So the, and to have that sanctioned by high-ranking officers uh -huh. really is 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 the level of what the uh, New York City Police Department was about at that time. Uh -huh. and. Uh -huh. Really, it uh, it took that tape to sort of wake people up to the uh, to the shambles of the uh, police department, and then it took a number of years really to uh, reorganize. And it took, of which I documented the whole reorganization, like of the task force and things on the Lower East Side, uh -huh. till about the time of the Democratic Convention. And then by that time, New York City's cops were totally a paramilitary organization, and mm. you, you could see by 9/11, for example. Mm. Uh, they had every street blocked off in lower Manhattan, the cop on every corner. They had the, the bridges closed, the tunnels closed, the yeah. airports closed. They had the whole city locked down. Mm -hmm. 
Well, if you look at the uh, riot tape in 88, you could tell the police department at that time was just so, like, it was like the whole city. I mean, there were squeegee guys in every corner. There was drugs in every mm. block. Uh, mm -hmm. Businesses were, were bleeding out of the city and leaving. Um, the whole get and after thing was taking, had taken place. I mean, mm. New York had gone from, uh, you know, the fashion industry being number one in 1983 to not existing by uh, 1988. And really? I hadn't realized that. Yeah. 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 Where is it now? Well, it's interesting because we found out about the hat. Uh, you know, we yeah, made, this is your hat. This yeah, is a Clayton, the famous Clayton hat. Yeah. Yeah, we were the first people to put a label and a signature and embroidery going around the baseball cap, which mm -hmm. was a concept that was, you know, I started and then Elsa eventually got to the point of making the hats. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we got that we had to make the hats ourselves was that it was impossible, even though a hat is as American as apple pie, it was yeah. not possible to make the hat, the cap in New York City because the whole industry was just. Is that what that was about? Up. I see it. Yeah. Had a, I see. Yeah, right. Okay. And yeah. uh, actually, we had uh, written to all the uh, major sports companies and Walt Disney and places like that and said, we have this great idea for a baseball cap. Uh -huh. Well, eventually, they ripped it off. We sent one like to the headquarters of Disney, which was in Florida. And it took them two years to knock it off and go to China, get the hat made. But even it took Walt Disney two years because the whole, they had to go to China, set up a factory, get the whole thing in place. And it even took them two years. Uh -huh. the, uh, the industry was in, it was just in chaos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and it wasn't possible for us to go to the Orient because you needed a middle person and it was just too complicated for us. Uh -huh. But the idea was eventually ripped off. And, um, but that's how I knew about how the fashion and garment industry had dissolved and left the city, was yeah. just by our own experience of trying to get caps made in New York. Uh -huh. And they were all importing Korean baseball caps. And at that time, the only thing that it had to be to be an American cap was they had to have a label inside. Yeah. So the hat would come back pre-made, let's say, from Korea. Yeah, and then you put and the And then you just put the Made in America <laughs> label, and then all of a sudden it was Made in America. So, you know, all that kind of scamming and mm. things was going on in the country. Yeah. So that was 1988, and that was the police riot tape. Yeah. And then after that, I got involved in... Um, you, know, you, you, you were an artist. You were an artist. Yeah, uh, sculpture, you, yeah. Uh, painting, uh -huh, and, uh -huh. uh, and like that. And then you have the gallery on Essex Street in that. Yeah, and I have the gallery where I show a number of people whose work I uh, like, people that are outside the mainstream. You have. You've shown a great deal of work. Yeah. I've been down to a number of those exhibits. Yeah. Really good stuff. And yeah, you're in touch with a, a lot of the people of the area. And that's a really rich cultural area, the Lower East Side. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people still think that's the, perhaps the richest cultural area for real artistic, uh, particularly avant-garde artistic expression uh, in, in, in the New York City area. Huh? Well, it takes a long time to get something through all of the hoops. Like, for example, yeah. uh, most of the people that I've shown now have books out on their work. Mm -hmm. But you take, like, I give no art to uh, Boris Lurie. Who yeah, I Boris Lurie. Yeah, we did a program. We did a program on, yeah. on Boris. And yeah. Boris really was involved in a movement called No Art. And yeah, I, no I give art, yeah. No Art their yeah. first show in 30 years in uh -huh. uh, New York City. Yeah. And uh, it's really radical, radical art. Mm. And uh, America's so much into corporate now and yeah. into, you know, I mean, everything's like McDonald's hamburger. Mm. It's, uh, but to get into really avant-garde or difficult artwork, it's hard to do. And Boris, uh, their group was the first group of artists that did Holocaust art. Yeah. And B Boris was a survivor out of Buchenwald. Yeah, and he got right. picked up in 1942 in Riga. And the art is extremely difficult. Yeah. I mean, Difficult? Yeah, uh, heavy psychological, uh -huh. uh, really, you know, like it might show a bare naked lady over a, 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 a cart of dead bodies. Now, uh -huh. It was interesting yeah. that yeah. the dead bodies, in yeah. fact, yeah. had come out of uh, Buchenwald. Yeah. It was taken uh -huh. by the American uh, liberators yeah. when they came there. Uh -huh. But it was interesting that um, Boris chose those pictures. Mm -hmm. Actually, the show that was at the Jewish uh, Museum that caused all the controversy those are all sort of second generation people using their imagination to deal with the Holocaust. I'm sorry, which show at the Jewish Museum? What, what, uh, there was a show at the Jewish Museum that dealt with Holocaust and artists of second uh, when, generation. When, when I, I, this would have been about probably about eight or nine, maybe a year ago. Uh, on, oh, I see, okay. Yeah, created right. a tremendous amount of controversy right. because it dealt with subjects like Hitler and, and mm. like that. Well, the interesting thing about that is, though, in reality, is that Boris is really the godfather of that whole kind of movement and they wouldn't include him in the show. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, there was an example of one of his pieces in the catalog they did for that show. Uh -huh. And uh, Eli Wiesel, I think, went crazy over that picture. Uh -huh. And it's interesting because Boris has every right to say whatever it is that he wants to say about the Holocaust or Buchenwald yeah. or whatever because sure. he was a survivor. Yeah, if I mean, not he, was he there. who, if not he who. If right. not yeah, he yeah, who, yeah. yeah. Nothing yeah. imagination yeah. about what he's talking about. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. So anyway, I showed that uh, art, which is really interesting. And now Boris is uh, 
born in 1924, mm -hmm. so he's uh, you he's know, had a lot of he's got a lot of years. He's, get, he's getting old. Yeah. So you hope that it's it's interesting with the Holocaust art and with this um, uh, Jewish art that uh, it's the Germans actually that are uh, that are showing it. He's had shows at Buchenwald and he's had shows in Berlin Isn't at NGBK. That interesting? Yeah. And he's had uh, three books put out now yeah. on his work, and yeah. it's all done by the Germans. And uh, somehow the Americans are not uh, really catching on to what Boris is up to. So I'd like to see him get some recognition. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. And you follow the other, and there's a lot of art in that Lower East Side. You're right in the middle of it. You're right just a little south of Tompkins Square. There's well, a lot of art percolating down there. you got the New York Poetry Center, I know, and you got other well, things. the New York Poetry Center is obviously a, a very good in, uh, place and is established nationally and really internationally, The you know, the uh, the quality of the, uh, culture that they put on there, but the larger reality really is is that yep. the Lower East Side has turned into an entertainment zone. Entertainment it, zone. Yeah, pretty well, and mm. you know we've lost our whole sort of sense of community design. Like at one time, you used to have like you know one church, one synagogue, one school, one pastry shop, yeah. one laundromat. Now, for example, you, you go down Ludlow between Houston and uh, Delance, and you've got like 12 bars. Now, I don't know what community needs 12 bars in two well, blocks, yeah. but I mean, that's what we're dealing with. Yeah. It's set up this whole, this is under Bloomberg. You used it, to have the Shulkas, or was that in second Oh, the Selkas, yeah, yeah, that's part of Lower East Side. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, and so what's happening is, is, is that, you know, it's just turning into like a tourist neighborhood because really? you have to, well, you have to import Gentrification? People. Is gentrification. it gentrifying? Oh, it's gentrified that much. Yeah. That. yeah. Uh -huh. And so really the only people that will pay the high rents uh -huh. or can pay the high rents are either bars or restaurants. Uh, so it sets really? up this whole sort of false economy uh -huh. where the only people that can make use of the uh, commercial spaces uh -huh. are bars and restaurants because uh -huh. there's no way a bookstore can make, uh, can pay, let's say, $6,000, $12,000 a month. A or, or, or a tie-dye or, tie -dye I, yeah, or a candle shop yeah, or, or an like. artist gallery or any of those things. So yeah, that really is going to dictate a lot, isn't it? Oh, it the does rent dictate. Is, uh, the rent factor the, is a big rent, factor in terms rent. of locating what's going to be going on, you know? Yeah, actually at uh, ABC in Rio in 1979 there was a show called yeah. The Real Estate Show and it was yeah. kind of an artist show and it's kind of like a whole thing about premonition because uh -huh. that show was one of the first shows that I know about that was about gentrification. Uh -huh. and it was what, about, what year would that have That was 1979. 79, okay, yeah. yeah. The whole gentrification thing which is a big part of the uh, the story of New York City now, isn't it? Uh, absolutely, yeah. and uh, certainly, uh, you know, with the deindustrialization, you don't need those people that were factory workers, which a lot of would people from the Lower East Side, light industry and like yeah, that. So right. actually with the dissolving of the cap, mm -hmm. interestingly enough, yeah. is the dissolving of jobs and people's places in the neighborhood as well. Of the working class jobs. Of the working class, the light yeah. in industry, all those thousands of women that worked in those uh, sweatshops. Yeah. And, and, you know, you can't really just say all of them were like sweatshops because yeah. by this time, the 80s, the, there was unions and a lot of those shops were, yeah. uh, were you know, union well-run health care places. Right, right. And so they've eventually eliminated, you know, once you saw the disappearance of the possibilities of making the cap, you also saw those jobs disappear. And then yeah. you could look. It's interesting with the Spanish community, because I've documented a tremendous number of the, um, well, the kids that grew up in the neighborhood, the uh, Puerto Ricans and that, I photographed yeah. them as they were growing up. Yeah. And this is an invisible uh, loss on the Lower East Side that you don't see, because when you're down there, you still see, well, there's obviously a lot of Hispanics and things, yeah. but that's the projects. Mm -hmm. But if you realize the tenement buildings, uh -huh. thousands of uh, uh, Puerto Rican families lived in those buildings, and, and most of those people have all sort of slipped out of the neighborhood. When I start going through the pictures that I have taken of kids in the yeah, neighborhood... Yeah, you've got a, you've got a gallery of everybody who's been down there, it seems to me. You've taken yeah, tens pictures. of thousands of pictures. Tens of thousands, literally, literally tens, tens of thousands, thousands, yes. Thousands and thousands. Every day I take Video pictures. and, and uh, uh, still. And videos. Yeah, yeah, and stills yeah. and videos. Well, this goes out a long time, and I want to... Maybe you hold this for me for yeah, the camera. Sure. Uh, because this is a thing I happen to pick up on my, I just happened to see her, I was coming down oh, to talk with you. This is a lucky. book we happen to have on our bookshelf, and it's called A Political a Poli uh, Portal to America, The Lower East Side, 1870 to 1925. Yeah, good book. Photographs, Chronicles, the Epic First American for Millions of Immigrants. And it's sitting here, this is really an interesting book, and it's, it it's sort of follows book. upon what you're doing. It says, among mm -hmm. other things, if I can find it, it said, among other sides, he was talking about the Lower East Side. They had the Yiddish theater and things, and it said, an intellectual working class, a phenomenon never to be repeated in this country, emerged from the Lower East Side. It said Lower that you had a lot of those people that were immigrants and they were working class, but that there was a really rich intellectual community uh, uh, development that happened also 
uh, during, uh, in the you know in the late 19th century and into the 20th century. It was jam packed with uh, immigrants from Eastern Europe and so forth. But it, there was a Absolutely. rich cultural tradition too. Yeah. And I'm thinking maybe it's something like that could be said for it still. But you say there's some problems. But well, it's a, a tradition. It's, that's it's, what I'm it's, saying. it's an interesting. Uh, certainly, when you get an immigrant population, what you get is you get the whole population. So you mm -hmm. got from the genius to the idiots. Yeah. You know? So right. even though Lower East Side would be like a very working class ghetto kind of area, mm -hmm. it's ghetto with first generation people. Which and it was it, ghetto because the rents were over a long time affordable to people who have low, uh, modest means. But now you say that's beginning to be eroded in terms of the reality. Yeah, that was the, that was a major. Of course, you had people like Jacob Reese, a photographer of the past. Yeah, the street the, Arabs and that sort of thing they've produced yes. a lot of that stuff the uh, we were I was telling you, we just did the thing the educational alliance they've been right. there since 1879 and yeah. now they've grown oh yeah they, they're they, an institution now yeah they're an institution right. and they've grown mm -hmm. but the area is there and they said a lot of those photographs from that time it was pretty hard scrabbled you know that they, those people had in that time it was a uh, it was a rough a rough kind of life that they tried uh, to get it was out extremely of. difficult I mean you know it's easy to idealize it yeah. and sort of romanticize yeah. it now and say wow how great it was but mm -hmm. if you really go through the Jacob Reese pictures you'll see yeah. that uh, Although his uh, photographs certainly changed uh, history in America and, yeah. ma and made you know apartment living change and mm -hmm. the fact that people need windows and yeah. air spaces and and uh, you know a higher standard of but living. But some of those tenement buildings are still there. Uh, I mean, there's, there's been a lot of public there. housing that's come up in the area. Well, the public housing in, is, is and how there, do, where does so. that fit in in terms of the overall rent pattern and the pattern as far as living in that part of the world that you, you've been documenting so well. Well, it's, it's interesting to know whether that uh, dynamic will exist forever because certainly the neighborhood has been gentrified and sort of one of the last phases of gentrification obviously would be getting rid of the projects. And I think there has been, you know, uh, now, who plans would, underfoot who, to, uh, uh, to try to change that. And now, I know that Margarita Lopez, actually there was a person, yeah. Armando Perez, who was uh, part of this group called Charas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Um, they started off in like the 60s with this really great society and actually uh, Armando was really instrumental in making uh, Margarita Lopez uh, get elected. Yeah, she's on the city council now. She's on the city she's council. She's a real strong voice, yeah. Yeah, well this is her last term, but uh, Armando and that uh, sort of made this discovery of this trying to, um, you know, uh, sell or privatize the uh, the projects and they made that a large campaign and fought very hard to Could you talk to me a little there. bit about that? Because the, the projects... That I'm not really an expert on it. You're not it, an but, expert. Uh, you don't know well, but I mean because that's that a major institution and a major uh, bulwark against uh, street, uh, you know, of homelessness for a whole lot of people that simply can't afford market uh, rates of, uh, well, of uh, uh, rent as they are on the market, as it were. When you say it's being threatened as an institution? What I would say to people is this. I would say well, whenever you go across the bridges, look at the lights because, I mean, for a time there, it looked like the, uh, a lot of the projects that were close to the bridge didn't have a lot of lights in it. Uh, so you're wondering if there's like a, a warehousing of apartments because, uh -huh. you know, it's like when they used to have the World Trade Center there. I mean, all the lights were on at night and so you could see that it was yeah. gave the impression of being fully occupied. Well, mm -hmm. in an apartment building, which projects are, you'd come across Williamsburg Bridge and you'd look over at the projects and you'd see just all kinds of empty rooms. So you're wondering yeah. if they're not warehousing those apartments. Well, that's an, uh, And that's, the other thing that's happening that's is, not is based on statistics we're dealing with a class war here. Yeah, really. okay. That's what gentrification yeah. is essentially yeah. about. Oh, yeah. It's, class it's war. worth talking about. It's important. And issue, with yeah. the, the emptying out, I think, of the tenements, mm -hmm. uh, that would be like getting back to the hats. I mm -hmm. mean, all of those, and Broadway, which was close to the Lower East Side, you mm -hmm. know, Broadway below, uh, let's say, uh, uh, Houston Street, Houston, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. A lot of those. Uh, buildings which are now art galleries and things at that time were factories mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah. they had like hundreds of women working there and you'd yeah. go to Christie Street and that would also have factories right, in. Right. So with all of those jobs going overseas mm -hmm. eventually that part of the population just disappears mm -hmm. and so you start losing the light manufacturing you start losing the whole working class because who can afford to, so what happens is Lower East Side still has an immigrant population, but a lot yeah. of times it would be like, let's say, Chinese or Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And how do the Chinese deal with it? Well, a lot of times they move into one of those tenement buildings mm -hmm. and they move like 20 people, people into an apartment. Yeah, right. So right. you got a $2,000 a month apartment, mm -hmm. but you got 20 people living there, so you got switching beds and everything else, and everybody ends up paying 100 bucks a week or yeah. 200 bucks a week yeah. and so the landlord makes a tremendous amount of money yeah, right. but it's an affordable space bed for one of these uh, people to live in yeah so you do have an immigrant population of Bangladesh and Chinese still mm -hmm. uh, you still have um, 
uh, Dominicans uh, coming and going, but not so much. And like I say, a lot of the Puerto Ricans that lived in the uh, tenements are now gone. Mm -hmm. And do I think that at some point there will be um, a whole sort of structural change and they'll use that to get rid of the projects? Of course, because like I say, it's a class war. And most of those people, a lot of the people living in projects are obviously working class people. Well, when the whole neighborhood gets to be that a cheap apartment is twelve hundred dollars yeah you can't be working class and being paying you know for a family and paying you know minimum that's twelve hundred dollars for a studio but, but isn't so there a large dollars a month you can't uh, isn't there a large political or otherwise constituency for the projects and for the uh, and also income maintenance uh, income stabilization that sort of I mean cost stabilization no, it's kind of rent because the rents nationally and in this country the rents are out of control in terms of people that are not uh, on the upward mobile track and so forth it gets to be where they're paying 50 60 70 percent of oh, their class income war. in no, it's, it's class war. rent no and it, it's going to come to some sort of a there's going to be some sort of a protection against those people being totally dispossessed of Why any do you say possession that? Why? well why? Because it could it could What's break out. What's the guarantee? Out. Well, uh, that there'd be political interests that would uh, support them. Um, although I see the well, danger that if not, but you're going to have a you're going to have the, the the possibility of a like for instance, I was talking yesterday with Art Delugoff, right. and he said that you know one of the things. Good guy, Art, by the way. Great guy, great, great guy, great guy, great guy. Used to go there and photograph all the time. Good, fabulous. you know him, yeah. yeah. But we were talked then uh, that, that that as far as the entree to the middle class status within the American experience. The, the biggest thing that's been an entree to, let's say, getting some sort of really growth of net worth and so forth has been the ability for middle class FHA help and so forth, uh, was the ability for people to gain uh, ownership of a home, let's say, or something like that. And then the appreciation of the value of the home has gone up over time, and so the net worth went up with the appreciation. That's been the major source of people getting a, sort, a leg up, as it were, in terms of moving into maybe the lower rungs of the upper middle class or something well, like that. Why does society but have to stay the same? Why well, does it have to be the same? I mean, you know, we, we also at one time lived in a feudal system. I mean, you're assuming that democracy is here, and it's, it's a constant, and it's a guarantee. And that's absolutely not true. Okay. And and, well, um, we, there's going to be strong consequences uh, if there could be. It's a I don't bubble. Know if there are it's not. a real estate bubble. It's a real estate bubble. And whether there could be a bursting of a real estate bubble, if there were a bursting of the real estate bubble, the social and political consequences would be staggering in this country and this around whole the world. Thing from my and Art Delugoff said he saw Mr. Greenspan talking about the term that there may be something like that on the horizon. But that's been a stable leg up for a great number of people in terms of this society. So you're saying they're attacking even the project and so forth. But no, I'm saying the possibility is there. But what I'm also saying is, like the whole thing about the police riot on that tape was, the, the in thing for me, in 1988, was yeah. that was the beginning of the reorganization. So I believe that that tape showed somebody high up in the government when they looked at those cops and saw mm -hmm. how, that's a paramilitary organization. When mm -hmm. anything is that slack, that loose, that out of control, you have nothing. You had that shot of you up in a car and the guy hitting I had, you? Uh, three hours and 33 minutes of, uh, you know, what really was described at that time as a police riot. Yeah, so a, yeah, whatever yeah. sort of incidents yeah. or minor parts, mm -hmm. the overall thing was really a police riot. Now, yeah. Not only was it a police riot, but mm -hmm. it showed the complete disintegration of yeah. order. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. and that was that was where the structure was at at that time. Uh -huh. by, by, by 2001, you had the ability within three hours to completely shut down this whole town. Uh -huh. You uh -huh. know, it's an illusion to believe that yeah. we couldn't slip into like a military state or well, something else. Well, that's what I'm saying. So that whole thing about worrying about, oh, where are people coming from, the middle income, yeah. you know, there's a march that's going well, across I, I, this country that's yeah. far bigger and more dangerous than in r this rolling thunder. That's well, just, I, I'm aware know. of that. I'm aware and of that. I'm not that. sure yeah. that all of these you know, the whole concept of democracy or whatever. Why does it have to be a constant? I mean, mm. uh, and, you know, this talking about democracy, I mean, democracy is great for us, but we prophetize it like Christians or yeah, something. You know, yeah. we're over there in the Middle East saying this democracy. Democracy isn't necessarily great for everybody. And sometimes, if you take, like, the North American Indians, in mm. order for them to go from, like, yeah. the Stone Age to, like, even the somewhat modern age, uh -huh. that was a very tough transition for, yeah. for those people culturally. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You can't just go into, like, desert people or people that have lived in tribes and whatever and think all of a sudden we're going to have McDonald's and, you know, uh, a premier or prime minister or president or whatever in, like, 30 days. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Much less you're going to impose that on the whole world. And you can't impose yeah. it on the whole world, uh -huh. nor would you want to. If mm. I... 
got a beautiful woman in a bathing suit. Yes. A beautiful Maka woman. Beautiful woman, woman in a bathing gorgeous. suit. We're getting the image. What right. Can, yeah. I'm, we're each going to hop on a bicycle, and we're going to ride through Williamsburg mm -hmm. on Shabbos. Yeah, uh -huh. And we're going to find out how far that democracy yeah. and how far that uh, somebody's yeah. freedoms and rights goes. They, well, they would stone and pillage that person yeah. because it's anti their culture. Yeah. They're not into that kind of influence. Yeah. And that's the same with these Arabs and people. They're not into McDonald's. They're not into Coke. That's even if it was a full bathing costume from 1900. Yeah. I mean, Much what, less a bikini. Right. Yeah. And that's their right. Yeah. And it's like the Hasidic women. They yeah. wear long dresses yeah. and they wear wigs. So and people are different. The people have different cultures. Different right. Cultures. But and, I mean, and so to, to yeah. sort of think that this democracy is some sort of constant or this, this golden rule that, first of all, applies to everybody mm. is wrong. No. And to think that we're going to have it forever is yeah. wrong. All right. I that's mean, we've seen that's tremendous changes in yeah. this country. We sure Look, have. We went to war over, uh, over a lie. Mm -hmm. And we even overstepped Congress. I mm -hmm. mean, the president took it on himself that this was imminent danger of, of attack on this country. And yeah, when you think about that. Some people called the things lies that he told. Well, I mean, mm. look at, I mean, mm. if you look at Cheney, Cheney mm. says he misspoke. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I guess that's a good mm. Christian Euphemism. way of saying yeah. that, uh, that I lied. Mm -hmm. I misspoke. Well, okay, mm. well, well uh, yeah. how come we're not charging over the hill with that? Mm. Well, I think maybe we might be. We had Condoleezza Rice of appeared today, had to sure. appear under and pressure, And they've changed pressure. all of the, uh, this home security and whatever, and yeah, then all they of a sudden... they got the Patriot Act, Patriot, the Patriot Act, Act sure. it's coming down faster and faster. they got a new bill in Congress to investigate what the professors are teaching in the universities and so forth. So There's a lot of things coming, I understand if that. We, if we went to war over a lie, there were no weapons of mass destruction. I mean, we had the uh, intelligence in there for like at least 12 years, yeah. looking over everything, mm -hmm. plus we got all this supposedly intelligence. Mm -hmm. And then we had a guy like Saddam, who um, all of the uh, Al Qaeda and those people hated. Yeah, they he did. was a great he, deal for us. He was a secularist. Yeah, and he the was, women. Yeah, the, Hillary Clinton gave a talk the other day. A lot of right wingers were really upset because she said the women were much better off under Saddam Hussein than now. They were. Yeah, and so was I mean, there were television. Robert, I mean, uh, Friedman, Tom Friedman will say we need a country which is secular. Iraq was secular. Why do we need it to be secular? Well, that's his, Who's business? That's his thing. That's yeah, what we have to go. We that's their move. thing, but well, it's their thing. It's not my thing. That's, no, not necessarily. But Tom They're Friedman. not my people. No. They're not in my country. Mm -hmm. They live somewhere else. No. What they want to do is their business. But he makes All we point. want to be able to do is business with them. Mm. We only want to be able to buy oil from them. Well, That's the only okay. thing we want. Yeah. I mean, do we want to move over there? Do we yeah. want to live over there? We want oil from over well, there. Well, I would also take possible exceptions to your de 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 uh, characterizing this country as democratic. I don't think it's a democratic country, particularly economically. The assets are all owned by a handful of yeah, democratic people who own that's, all the assets. That's true. Everybody else is a... Uh, what the Marxists would have called a wage slave to those few who own the assets. Right, but I was and, the one that was uh, questioning so the really democracy. Democratic. I was the one that was questioning democracy. Yeah. You know, I was saying well, there is no guarantee that this system has to last That's or it has right. to be there. That was yeah. my point. Yeah, I know. And it would be, what, Bush couldn't come under another, another attack at the time of the next election, and yeah. they have all of a sudden now we need martial law or yeah, something? That of kind course. Of it's a very rich danger of that. Of, I folk, think so. Yeah, right. And it look, look, because it's so... Yeah, it's, uh, that's what I said. I, I'm not the whole sure. point about 88, why yeah. I keep harping and going yeah, back on, to that, and that's on. why I can't listen to some of these like Democracy Now! programs and mm -hmm. things like that, because what was happening in New York City was the beginning of that. It was like when Peter Missing used to have his poster out there, 1933 equals 1988. It was yeah. like a joke and nobody got it, but I'm not sure that it was that, wrong. That, that was over the Tompkins Square thing? That was at the Tompkins Square, yeah, and it took as long for Hitler to come, in, now, come yeah, in, into, right. uh, in, uh -huh. into power Compared as well. To Hitler, he was voted in. Yeah, in 1933. Yeah, and it took him, you know, years of starting off with the thugs and the mm -hmm. bars and the beating people up and going mm -hmm. from the street eventually to the institutions. Uh -huh. And we have gone through that. And mm -hmm. if people would have been aware back from 88 and watched that whole decline, like how did all those people end up in the street? How did mm -hmm. those, whether all these uh, people that uh, most of them black just wanted to live in the street so they all decided to move out there one day? Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. I mean, yeah. Koch changed the SROs into, uh, the, that was another beginning of this whole gentrification, into yeah. uh, co-ops and, uh, and condos. And they threw thousands and thousands of people out on the street. And those people are now gone. Now, the interesting thing is, is that now those middle class people that were getting those co-ops condos yeah. their jobs now are going to places like India and that oh, yeah, to the India and that of course because yeah. all those hundred thousand dollar jobs if you can get somebody in India to do it for thirty thousand dollars why do you want to pay this guy the outsource so yeah. it has reached now yeah. up to even yeah. the upper middle class yeah. with the loss of their jobs yeah and it's even going to some of the professional things and it's even worse and they that. should have woken up years ago and yeah, now to listen to this democracy now and all these sort of harping on now you have a program called democracy now right. Amy Goodman yeah I can't, I can't listen to it you because cannot, no I can't take exception to absolutely hundred percent because all of those things, it's like 
watching a fire reach up to your door and then all of a sudden when the whole house is on fire you have somebody screaming from the inside the house is on fire well we were, aren't they we, screaming the house is on fire they're presenting yeah the house is on fire yeah but, but the house screaming. is on fire yeah the house did not have to be on fire the house the starting the burning of the house started many years ago yeah. and for me it's uh, my understanding of it and certainly yeah. the watching and the documentation yeah. and the understanding of it started off in 1988 oh, you said it should have been picked up on earlier of course oh, it should be picked see, right. up yeah the house yeah, is burning still, now hey hello it? there's a fire now. Yeah, oh, but great, thanks. Yeah, but isn't it good there's something there? I just saw, what's oh, his name? Did you see I don't know. Uh, Dean I, I the other night? Off, John, I think it's uh, way uh, off the radar. Dean, John Dean, you know, from the Watergate. He was on Bill Moyer. It was really great. And he went through and he said, among other things, he said, one thing, he said that that lying pattern to go into war was impeachable. Now, we know impeachment of a president. It was acceptable. To, was, no, but it, it, there has to be a political context to make that possible. We couldn't get it, apparently in the modern experience except through Mr. They lied. Uh, there was no eminent danger. Person or thing. But he said it's impeachable, but he also said... Bibi Netanyahu, who's one of the, the extreme hawks mm -hmm. in Israel, said yeah. he had no fear prior to the war. I heard this myself. Mm -hmm. He had no fear of Saddam uh, Hussein. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, if he, the hawk, mm -hmm. whose security is like, you know, 90% of his head, mm -hmm. has no fear of Saddam, uh -huh. how are we, why are we afraid of Saddam? Even during the last war when he was more military capable, uh -huh. couldn't get some of his old scuds into yeah. Israel. They yeah. only got like 11 in there or yeah, something. Yeah. Right, right. And all of a sudden, he's going to be bombing us, and we buy that, and we still buy that. Yeah. And the weapons of mass destruction after people had gone through that country for years. You know, I have a photograph show yeah. up right now of this guy called Q Sakamaki that was in Liberia. Yeah. This is children with guns out there killing all kinds yeah, of other horrible. people. It no, is horrible, but yeah. we don't care because there's no oil there. There's not no to, anything yeah, there. That's, right. that's not human to rights. Ten years ago in Rwanda. Yeah, not to mention Rwanda. Ten, ten, ten yeah, animals. millions uh, of people. Uh, horrible. So, what, so where's the human rights and democracy in that? Yeah. No. All right. These are so kids with guns. Yeah, but it's still good that there be some voices even now because we could have said that we could have seen that in the long run. Bobby Dylan told us it was blowing in the wind. Maybe you know, could pick it up. Yeah, so when people can pick those signals up and so forth is when they can. And I think it's they good pick it up when it's when it's too late. They, yeah. And then and then they just get into this. You know, it becomes like abortion. Politically correct be, thing or something. Yeah, it becomes saying? politically correct, and it also becomes like an abortion issue. Well, where it has are to be the, so big you can't argue. Where, it. You where, can't take it apart. Where are the good voices now? Then, if they're, if you say that isn't, I mean, it seems well, the one thing I really started to question. The, the criticism of the of the Bush administration pretty consistently in democracy now and other places like that. I mean, where are you going to find the voices that are going to call appropriate? John Dean said. You know, said, you know, you know what happened. Let me finish. He said okay, he sorry. said that he thought that uh, it was impeachable. That was a big thing. Whether or not you know it's a political thing. Whether or not this thing comes a cropper in Iraq. It could come a cropper. It come a mess. We just had Fallujah. We had all these things happening. We got our boys dying over there and that sort of thing. Yeah, it it's could bad. Be to where it could lead to where the political context would be one where uh, it could blow out in one way. It could be a blowout. Rather than a close election in 2000 like it was, it could be a fiasco, and there could be a context where impeachment might actually be able to be called. Or it could go, as you're hinting, the other way. It could become a move really to the far right, very hard militant right, uh, and, a, and a blowout in the other way. But right. he said, Dean said in that thing, he said he's been following things carefully. He's a very thoughtful voice. He's got yeah. a book out. Uh, worse than Watergate, something like that, uh, the Iraq thing. And he said that he's been following it carefully and that, partic uh, that the press, after Watergate and Woodstein and Bernstein, Wood, you know, Woodward and Bernstein and mm -hmm. investigative reporting that that's been going, that it seems that a switch was turned when the Bush administration came in as far as the press and that they're practically totally lined up uh, in a compliant attitude toward the system. Harold. You don't think that's true? <laughs> Okay, no, talk to it. Yeah, but he said. Look, the whole thing with Amy Goodman or or the Village Voice or these papers, they should be local. They, sh you know, when that whole thing was going on in Tompkins Square, you know, there were there was so many civil rights violations that were happening on a daily basis that mm -hmm. they completely ignored and overlooked. Mm -hmm. Things start incrementally and uh, and move up. We should yeah. be, you know. That whole business with the press, what was happening in the reorganization of the police department in New York City? Yeah. So you're talking on a national level national, now. You're, you're, international, okay. cosmic. I'm talking yeah. <coughs> in the neighborhood. Okay, fair now, enough. Amy fair Goodman enough. and those people had actually stood up, Gabe Pressman and those other people, because mm -hmm. I documented on the street for a long time. Well, I don't think Gabe what Pressman the policemen, and Amy Goodman are in the same bailiwick. Juan Gonzalez, they are in the, maybe. They are in the same bailiwick mm -hmm. for, on a certain perspective because they're, they're uh, journalists and they're newspapers well, people. What well, happened on the streets of New York City was... If you go back to the books, like let's say Ouija and stuff like that, where you saw a crime or something happening, you'd see the, you know, the body there, the police there. That was probably a little bit too chaotic. 
But by the time you got up to um, starting off with Dinkins, what you started to do getting was the moving of press into pens. Mm -hmm. So now the press are no longer running around on the streets documenting and capturing the engine. Uh, the action, they're, that's right, they're, they're embedded. embedded yeah. And so Being what's happening, there's a, there's a press, mm -hmm. uh, there's a protest or a riot or something happening on the mm -hmm. street, mm -hmm. and the first thing the police do is they come over there, they set up all of these, uh, these boundaries Coffins. and borders and restrictions, yeah. and all of a sudden the press are standing over there. Well, this isn't the White House we're talking about. We're yeah. talking about the incremental starting off first steps, what are the press doing standing over there in a pen? Yeah. And that's the press. And yeah. that's Gabe Pressman, who was the president at that time of the mm -hmm. press association, not asking, him, what are you doing in a pen? Mm -hmm. You're supposed mm -hmm. to be a journalist. You're yeah. supposed to be recording the action. Yeah. 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 You know, it's up to you to take care of your own safety. So you say this stuff has been eroding more. Of course. I mean, it's yeah. been starting for a long yeah. time. Now all of a sudden Amy Goodman's talking about, well, there's this whole well, thing in the I White House. I'm Harold, if those people would have paid attention to what was happening on the home front, the building wouldn't be on fire. They would have smelt the smoke. Mm -hmm. They're not smelling the smoke. They're seeing the full-fledged fire now. Okay. And that whole um, business with the press, certainly in New York City, that whole business of the restrictions, you, all of this business now with the press pass, you're, you're not allowed to document on the streets of New York City? No, you have to have this certain a they, they've they've fact. A, they have a certain made press, pass. To get a press pass. Yeah, they make, and first of all, you shouldn't need a press pass. Yeah. Press pass should give you... Um, entree into a situation that needs a certain amount of security or high risk or too many people or you know it's a way of yeah. governing you know presidents here you can only get 10 people in the room yeah. who's got a press pass mm -hmm. but on the streets of new york to document you should not need a press pass mm -hmm. this is an open free society yeah. Yeah. and now they've well, got it, they've got it, it so is. now they've got pens yeah. yeah they've got the press in pens over there and in order to even get into that pen you have to have a special pass mm -hmm. that's 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 uh, so you were saying there were some other avant-garde precursor oh. warnings about what was coming rather than just these things that are so obvious now but that's that's always yeah. a problem because some people think if they'd only listen to our plight then they would have been seen a long time sooner, and that's true. I mean, somebody that, said once the artists are the intent of the race, they pick up yeah. things early. And sort I of mean, the buffalo doesn't end up in the kitchen full grown. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, right. I mean, all of a sudden. Now listen, I, I, someone, these, are, these are dangerous times. I'm hip. They're very dangerous. They're very it dangerous could, times. It seems to me that election could go instead of it being very close, like it was in 2000. It may. I don't know, but it I don't may know go what one it was way in or 2000. the other. I don't know what it was in 2000. 2000 was like a tone. tone uh, you know, a friend of mine, Q, also the guy that had the Liberian photographs, which I have on right now, and Liberia definitely is a brutal war mm -hmm. and um, Africa a great deal of it is in a mess yeah mm -hmm. so but anyway we, 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 we you know we have that going but, and th these are these are things we're going to talk but I want to talk about a couple specific things. want to get it in because we only have an hour we could talk right. for 25 hours with no problem at all <laughs> you know but uh, that we want to get in because you got a couple projects going now yeah actually I and do. I wanted and, to show uh, this book because that well, goes back to 1870 documenting this rich cultural area of New York called the Lower East Side. Yeah. And here you've got, tell me, you've got a couple projects going. Why don't you lay it out in words, and then you can show some pictures of this uh, mock-up of the book. Okay, I started off uh, last summer uh, for this project called Howl, which was put together uh, Howl? under FIVA. Yeah, it was by off Phil Hartman. Uh, Phil Hartman had this. Is that off uh, Ginsburg, Howl? Um, I guess so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Another it's a tribute, side, to yeah. a tribute to him. A tribute to him, right. I saw the best minds, et cetera. So what I had... Uh, sort of realize, but the gentrification, um, you know, the Lower East Side, it was never really possible to capture the, the history, like, or the culture, because yeah. it was always rolling. You know, it was like going out in the morning and looking for what new uh, mushrooms had, had sprouted up during yeah. the evening rain, yeah, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> There's a whole stock. Yeah, because next year it might be something totally different. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> but with the gentrification, and this, it, it really kind of stabilized the whole neighborhood. What happened with gentrification is you lose the soul. Mm. You end up like Soho where all of a sudden everything becomes rich and elegant, but there's no soul, there's no humanity, there's no artist. It's just like a shopping place now, whereas at one time it was a thriving artist community. Uh -huh. And now it's just kind of like an expensive place bourgeois. to live. It becomes bourgeois and boring uh -huh. and, uh -huh. you know, and... Now you make the assumption necessarily that bourgeois and aristocratic or upper is necessarily boring. Is what? Is, ne is boring. No, I'm uh, saying by the time you get to the to the Soho thing. So so that the oh. artist has to be no, it doesn't have to be angst ridden against the social no. conditions. No, or no, no, no. creates no. art. Or what creates a, a uh, what, renaissance of great art? What conditions and you, you need some sort of support. The one thing in a democracy was you see in the past when you had uh, let's say you were in Rome. Yeah, in Roman in Roman times in the Renaissance. Times, I mean, yeah. what you would have to have was a large institution like the church uh, and the de Medici mm. supporting oh, who you were and what you were doing. Yeah, yeah, right. Or if you were in ancient Egypt, mm -hmm. you had to have the pharaoh uh, supporting you, and they mm -hmm. made things for the pharaoh. Mm -hmm. 
Well, as we got into a democracy and a free society, it became to possible. To the degree we have. To the degree we have, it became mm -hmm. possible to be an individual voice. Mm -hmm. And a, and a spokesman for your own cause, yeah. a Don Quixote even, yeah. if you like. And in order to really have that kind of cauldron or that, that s place to swim around in and yeah. to, to deal with your ideas, you yeah. have to have something where you're not spending all your time making rent. Yeah. So well, that's it, what I was so, trying to say. So an so, inexpensive so, so area hard, was, was important. The hardscrabble life of the ghetto isn't exactly a, a pleasant thing to have to put up with and so forth. So the no. gentrification is merely, is that just another word for increased higher standard of living for people? Most people want well, to have an increased standard of living for themselves or for their kids. Well, generally the you know, uh, I mean, relationship that we're talking yeah, about okay. is a class war thing, and it's really mm -hmm. about yuppies. And yuppies are about young, upwardly uh, mobile professionals. So. Mm -hmm. That means that their whole sort of uh, life and what they're geared for is their is their profession, their career, and getting ahead. That's what a lot of and parents would wish for their kid, wouldn't they? Say, and I hope only. you become successful. I hope you become a well, doctor. Well, and, and we both hope that they do as well. Yeah. But yeah. what happens yeah. is, is that then you get the moving out of the low-income people yeah. because their jobs are disappearing, yeah. and so you, true, Lower East Side is probably a nicer, safer place because now you have lawyers and DAs and all mm -hmm. these other people mm -hmm. living there. And all the social services that follow that money. No, we yeah. have lots of bars and restaurants. Oh, right, okay. But, um, and some of the services like expensive gourmet delis Well, I meant like garbage and stuff. pickup and all kinds of things like that, you know, you well, know the kinds of things that accommodate uh, generally. Uh, generally, like you get a, a, a lot more rules and restrictions. you get up in Scarsdale and Westchester are pretty leafy and well, nicely maintained and everything. Yeah, you get into sort of following the dictum of uh, block associations, and we want everybody to have a pink fence or a white fence. Now you're getting prejudicial you get into all that. the bourgeois, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. Okay, okay, I mean, okay. I, no, no, yeah. I mean, there's, there was yeah. a reason I lived on the Lower East Side. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. By the mm -hmm. time you get now to Green Street, mm -hmm. your, your garbage has to conform. Everything has to conform to a certain pattern. Yeah. But listen, tell us about but the But anyway, yeah. so uh, this is a, a film video now history. Now this is a film and video history of the Lower East uh, Side. Lower East Side. A recent, yeah. right? Yeah. So Actually, you got uh, some pictures you're going to show. These got pictures and a great deal of text. Yeah. You're going to try and come. Which one? The top one or the bottom? What do you want to show? You got two photographs here. Well, you're let's look at the one. Okay. Okay, that's Ari Rusimov uh, uh, filming uh, Shadows in the City, and there's uh, Taylor Mead. Taylor Mead's a very famous and well-known uh, local uh, artist. Yeah. But you see, I was just helping Taylor out through photographing him in his apartment, just to uh -huh. stuff just for a second. Uh -huh. This is what your bourgeois thing. Mm. He's uh, seven, my seven, thing. seven. I'm just talking like he's a sociology. Seventy-eight years old. Mm. Um, obviously, on a stable income because mm -hmm. he's not going to be earning a lot more money. Mm -hmm. And uh, lives in a fifth story. Is his bottom one Taylor Mead then? Yeah. Yeah. Here. So he wanna, maybe you can get the one at the bottom. That's I'll find you another. Yeah. Let's, yeah. yeah there you go. There's okay. Yeah. Long. So he's uh, 78, was a Warhol superstar, has been, you know, really in the avant-garde. He's extremely important. Well, they were trying to throw him out of his apartment. I see. This is that gentrification. This is the gentrification. Yeah, so, right. okay. you know, it, uh, it takes really uh, throwing Taylor out to get in that lawyer. Uh -huh. And that's where there's a whole parcel of this loss of soul and whatever. You know, uh, you I just see. end up okay. with this yuppie yeah. mentality. Right. Okay, yeah. Anyway, we saved uh, Taylor's apartment, and, you know, I took a lot good of pictures for, for him and good, stuff like good, that. Good, good, but good. that's part of the process of the gentrification. Now, this, this book specifically is, you've got two going, if I understand right. Uh, this I have is more the, than that. But, uh, 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 this is the film and history or something. Yeah, this is um, Here's a, a picture you can come in film is video that? Uh, history of Lori's side. I can't, I can't um, see without my daughter. Okay, this is Rafik. Rafik Rafik. Oh, Rafik. Store. Rafik. There you go. God, I loved Rafik. Actually, this whole place. Oh, yeah. The, On Broadway. The, the man there. behind mm -hmm. uh, MNN, really, mm -hmm. one of the big players well, was he Rafik. Was, he was a legend among all a these legend. independent filmmakers. Absolutely. Absolutely. I and still got a film he gave me about the Irish coming up from... Really? Uh, yeah, he was great. I loved Rafik. Well, you have that his, film? used to go to his... I got it at home. He gave it to me specially. He dug through a bunch of boxes to find it to really? give it to me special you know wow. he was great he had to do was a great, great christmas parties we used to yeah go to. wow yeah. he had yeah. it on broadway just below uh, so you, know. you appreciate yeah. the inclusion of somebody like rafiq rafiq was great it and you see this is not the kind of per this mm. book is about the players yeah so Rafik is an ex ex is an excellent example of somebody that normally wouldn't be in a book, right. because he's totally a black a background uh, person. He's he's a pillar. Well, he was he's in my substantial. book. Substantial. Yeah, and among the artistic community, the filmmakers, right. independent you filmmakers. You mentioned him. Yeah. Editing. You could do editing. And yeah, everything. you can do everything there. Matter of yeah. fact, a lot of 
MNN, they used to go in order to transfer because you had that three quarter inch sure, at that yeah, time. Yeah. Everybody went to Rafik, yeah. and, and MNN was on 23rd Street. Yeah. So uh, Rafik was the backbone to this place as well. Well, yeah, and before there was MNN, there was an independent film uh, industry, I yeah. mean, a community. And, and I knew mean, them all. Mikas yeah, and all Robert those Frank, yeah. Mikas, yeah. Uh, Jim Jarmusch, right. uh, all those people. And a lot made of that was down places. the Lower East Side. Uh, yes, yeah. he was on 12th and Broadway. Your, your so, bailiwick. So this book is. So uh, you're documenting some of the, the, the characters. Well, Oh, what happened is have... there's a couple of people that um, uh, Paul Bartlett and uh, Urania Myolonis, yeah. they uh, they helped me uh, edit this and, and, and put this together. We get, what we mm -hmm. have is about, we have Aldo Tambellini. Mm -hmm. Aldo uh, Tambellini had a, uh, a venue called the, the Gate who... and the Black Gate on the uh, Lower East Side. That was Although a film place. And, Tambellini, I don't yeah. and so what's happening with this book is yeah. It's about 600 pages, yeah. um, but 108 different chapters, all yeah. written by different people that were part of, uh, that the were same. players. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it goes all the way in back the to Lower East Side. The Lower East Side. So yeah. it goes back to the turn of the century, mm -hmm. some of the first movies being made there, up until like late 50s, uh -huh. Dee Dee Halleck. Uh -huh. Dee Dee Halleck, God yeah. bless her. Yeah, yeah very yeah. important. You know, yeah. Did you know that Dee Dee was nominated for an Academy Award in 1959 for I a film? I did not know that. Yeah. For yeah. what? For a what? A film she shot as an, actor, on, uh, as an editor. Or uh, as a no, as she shot a film on Henry Street. In the Lower East Side. So she produced it. In 1959. Yeah. No, yeah. she shot it and did everything. She was like teaching at that time. God she was very young her. at that time. God bless her, yeah. Yeah, she was nominated for an Academy Award. So Dealey's a mother of public access. In that there you go. Movie. So She's this is the quality of. So everybody, you know, yeah. that I'm mentioning in this book, you mm. know and heard of. Well, no, I, I know a lot of them. You and, know. She's uh, yeah. really close with Mikhail Horowitz, a great poet. Yeah, he's upstate, Dee Dee's, uh, yeah. is great. Yeah, so yeah. she's in here. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, you know, all of these people are like the uh, the major. Uh, uh, players from the uh, film video history. Everybody that I could get that was, uh, of course, you have people like Nick Zed, underground Nick Zed, film filmmaker. You know? And these are all people that hung out in the Lower East Side. Yeah. So and this is a, and you've already put this together. This is a mock-up, right? Yeah. So yeah. where I'm at now is I'm trying to raise $7,000 yeah, because to publish, uh, this? to publish this. Now, right. it's interesting because uh, NYU is very interested in publishing good, it. Good. But they're like seven grand short. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is... Um, put out a call. Yeah, now what yeah. I'm trying to do is uh, pre-sell these... more pictures to show from this? Oh, show? sure, we've got lots of pictures. We only, we've only got about uh, 10 minutes left. Let's oh, okay, we better gallop ahead. We want to get to the other book, too. you got yeah. another book going at the same time. Yeah, right? and actually all the pictures in this thing basically are mine. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Bashemi, Steve Bashemi, a famous... Uh, He's an actor. Actor, yeah. He's a well-known actor. He's a well-known actor. Side, yeah. Started off as a fireman, uh -huh. a performer, uh, Lower East Side, mm -hmm, eventually mm -hmm. graduated to Hollywood. Are these all photographs of yours? Uh, yeah, just about all of them. All of them, because you've got this. How many again? Tens of thousands? Oh, of tens of thousands, yeah, and hundreds of hours of video. I'm yeah. like you, Harold. You have yeah. an amazing archive yourself. No, but that's of, uh, people sitting like this. You take it with the camera, and it's great. And they're really yeah, great and videos as well. You I have a lot of video. Displays, everyone, I mean, exactly. Yeah, I had it in the windows for years. And so uh, this is the film and video side yeah, of things so, and uh, the history of it. And so that's a book you're trying to get published now. Yeah, and I've, I've been lucky in the fact that uh, Al Orensance of the Angel Orensance Cultural Foundation yeah. at uh, 172 Norfolk Street, yeah. he is, um, you know, accepting the money for this book because uh -huh. he is an, you know, a large institution there, the Angel Orensance Culture Foundation. Yeah. So if anybody's interested, they could send a check for uh, thirty dollars oh. plus five dollars shipping and handling to. Uh, I mean, as a, a forward. Uh, a, to get a pre-publication to, to order it, pre-order it before it's printed. Well, we we've, we've got a thing at the end where they can contact and it can be it could, people could get uh, knowing oh, okay. about that. But and I wonder, so the, can you tell us about the other book? Yeah. So yeah. the next book I'm working on is a political book of mm -hmm. uh, mostly dealing with eighty-eight to ninety-eight, mm -hmm. and once again it'll be like this: a, mm -hmm. a collection of. Uh, of uh, essays and articles by people who are players and know the different areas. Yeah, uh, uh, again, Lower East Side. Lower East Side. And this would involve a lot of the thing about uh, about the gentrification and yeah, the, the conflict with the police and the, right, and all of that, that kind uh, of gentrification. Uh, the, so this uh, one's more artistic uh, community video and yeah, film, particularly. Particularly, right? Although right. You, you deal with the painting and things like that. All kinds yeah, that's of another book. I'm working on. What I'd like to do is put together a, a cultural encyclopedia of Lower East Side, written by a number of people that are players. So well, you we'll, got a long way. You got a, you, between the two. Of the books you're talking there, you got a good part of it. Got a good like start, and I'm working on parallel to that, uh, a history on art too, of getting different people now to start writing about it. And the history of the art of the Lower East Side, like the painting, yeah. so you can bring Boris Laurie and these other people to there. Exactly. Because you know the scene down there. 
really well. Yeah, or, uh, or different people that can you. write about it. And, yeah. you know, I try to find as many different people that can write as possible. And so in this book, we have a lot of people that are like PhDs yeah. mm -hmm. or people that are like, you know, Taylor, just that have spent their whole life in the business. Yeah and are very familiar with it from that point. Yeah. So the point of view of history that I take is that um, all of the players were substantial uh, in the making of the whole building. I don't take just the star on the top. Yeah, uh -huh. I like to see the whole big structure. And yeah. so that uh, includes uh, Rafiq, made, yeah, right. uh, the Didi who, Halleck, yeah. uh, you know, not just the Jim Jarmishes and the Bashemis uh -huh. and the, um, the Jonas stars. Mikas and the, and the stars. Good for you because the whole yeah. industry, the whole movie, uh, all these industries have a few stars at the top. I did it with a fellow. What's his yeah. name? Damn, I can't remember his name. An actor, Benjamin? Uh, guy, he was a, a really good character actor. And he said the film industry is all imagined. The whole budget is for a couple of oh, yeah. stars. Couple of stars. And everybody right. else is just a few crumbs that get down for the people well, who it's really. It's an interesting yeah. book that just came out by Stephen Watson called Factory Made about the Warhol years. Uh -huh. And um, what that is, is kind of like the whole structure of the office. So you yeah. got to find out, you know, what Billy Name did and what yeah. uh, Gerard Malanga did mm. and what all the different people that came through did. Yeah. And it wasn't just Andy Warhol. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The whole no, I'm saying there's a cultural tendency to try and find the stars. Yeah, the you one know, guy. It's like some sort of a thing. The one right. guy that's going to encompass it all. But this is how it works. Yeah. It takes the yeah, whole blossom. It takes the it, whole bouquet. It is. You know, that's a, that's yeah. a much more uh, inclusive and uh, appropriate thing. And to cover the whole scene because you've got that, that area up there, and it's really a, 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 a rich area. So y this political one, go into some of the dimensions of what's in You start with the... Uh, do you, do you go back into history? Oh, uh, we you, do. We have from some, your time there. You were there from '79 on. Well, we have yeah, but we have some of the big players that were uh, interesting enough. A lot of times they were women, mm -hmm. but like uh, Emma Goldman, yeah. uh, Dorothy Day. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorothy Day was Dorothy there. Dorothy right? Day the was there. Worker, of course, yeah. the whole Catholic mm -hmm. worker mm -hmm. idea started there. Yeah. The paper and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, different, uh, the uh, uh, Black Mask, you know, from the 60s, mm -hmm. Ben Morea, very mm -hmm. elusive person. We have a great interview with uh, with him and about who he is and what mm -hmm. he represented. And, um, yeah, See, major cross-section about the um, an, an analysis now about the, the anarchists. Now, the writing, of, you've had people contribute as writers, right? right that's and correct. then you've edited it, and you've put editorial and notes and liners and notes and, and, and everything to the photos and things. A great deal of your photos are included in that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And you've yeah. got a lot of photos. Got a lot of photos. And you also have a lot of, let's just worth mentioning, you have a lot of videotape, don't you? A lot of videotape. Because tapes. you documented that Tompkins Square thing in 88, oh, but you've been doing, stuff for a long you've been time. doing videotaping in a consistent way. Oh, really, since 1986. For a long time. Yeah. And you then what happened? You have a lot of footage. You have a lot of footage? Yeah, a lot of footage. And then well, actually, after that's a while. Valuable. Well, as it's a, historically as an archival significant. record, yeah. It's, right. it's historically Are you thinking about doing anything with that? Around the video, footage. I would like to. It's, I mean, yeah. it's a huge challenge, and it's yeah, trying to figure out something yeah. to do. It's big enough chore right now to try to get these books done, which yeah. kind of helps stabilize. So, I also have like major, um, a large collection of uh, ephemera, you know, like political posters, a lot of the, the coffee shop posters, and that yeah. whole history. Yeah. You know, once you start getting and the tinkos, you, you have photographs of individuals, don't you? What do oh, you call thousands. it? You take photographs of people, individuals who are characters, and you've got all those. Oh, and thousands. Been able to, I don't want to. Uh, uh, Trade secret. Hey, have you been able to index all that pretty well? Do you have a Do you have a mind? Well, actually, can, I do things. Do you know with, where uh, that stuff is? I do things with Elsa Renza, and actually, Elsa took over a lot of the video. Actually, after a while, and uh -huh. uh, yeah, Elsa that's right. is a major uh, important uh, part of the whole uh, uh, organization. Obviously, yeah. but everything sure. I do is uh, Elsa and Clayton, basically. So yeah. it's not just me. And she's better at that organization and knowing where yeah. things are. Yeah, and it's she's good to have somebody like that that can keep track of things. That's you know? right. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's important lost. to the operation. You'd be lost without. I'd be lost. Admit it. You'd be lost without. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's a, it's, a, it's, no a, question. it's a team effort. Yeah, that's it's going a team on, effort. And it's a team right. effort that's going really well in terms of documenting that very rich and interesting part of the, of the, of the city and the history of it and everything. And this, that part of the city, as with the rest of the world, is seeing events in a contemporary context in terms of the world and so forth. And it really is a challenging time now. We've been saying this to each other. Oh, for it's a extremely long time. challenging. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of that stuff we talked about in April. the past, Harold, we're here. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of that nonsense we talked about years ago, we're here. So what do you think is going to happen? Let me ask you just uh, off that end. Congratulations oh, thank and, uh, you. on the well, work, not there yet, major work, and, and, we're and I hope that you can get support it. for that and so forth, and yeah. for all of that work that you and Elsa have been doing. It really should be supported in, in, in order to preserve the rich history that you've documented so mm -hmm. well there and everything. But what do you think? What's the word on the street, as it were? What's the feeling down there? 
let's just say for that part of town the way you can pick it up by osmosis or well, whatever. I mean I think it's easy over to this Iraq hitting, business uh, well over this Iraq you know on a, on a certain the, level the word well I don't know I mean is Iraq abortion I don't know I mean mm. you know one can get fixated in certain things like mm -hmm. uh, Bush and Iraq and yeah. Condoleezza Rice yeah you know and, well, and it doing is pretty, that looming pretty large now yeah you know? but so are all the 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 ten horsemen off to the sides, yeah. and you know we got our yeah. rights. We got you know yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of other you don't think they're peripheral things we should be looking at. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm saying that if all you do is you know the great thing about abortion is it's like yes or no. I mean mm -hmm. if you want to confuse an election or you yeah. want to get into some somebody's substance, all you have to do is throw in like abortion or something, and yeah, all of a sudden everybody's a way off in tangent. That's yeah, a then, single issue. Yeah, thing, the yeah, thousands of people will march behind and line up. Yeah, and it's, they, it's like a confusing. It's yeah. like a smoke. Yeah. It's like smoke. It's a single issue, yeah. And in reality, there are a tremendous number of many things happening in the background. All that. And I think that we should be, you know, like there was just a thing, for example, passed in New York, uh, reading in The Villager, that uh, having cops in bars, being the protector of the bars, uh, you know, cops out of uniform. Hmm. Well, when you go back to the history of cops in New York City and to the period of corruption, and we can always go back to that, and when hmm. you have 39,000 cops, you have a city. Hmm. You know, we like to think cops, good guys. Oh, cops, uh, block of wood, cops, you know. It's not like that. It's 39,000 people. It's like a whole city. And when you get a whole city, you have the potential for everything. Uh -huh. And then so all of a sudden now we've got this whole need now of, oh, okay, well, let's take the cops off duty and let's put them uh, protecting the bars. Well, mm -hmm. in the old days, that's kind of how it was working in the drug days. It was the same way. Well, so we're shooting back. I mm -hmm. think a, a big part well, we of what we wind it doing up. Yeah. Is, is concentrate on the neighborhood, Tomorrow. concentrate on these violations, unwind them here, and they'll eventually work their way back to the top. Okay, listen, we've got to close. We can talk for hours and Thank hours you, and hours, yes. days. And, and days. it's your pleasure. The perceptions of uh, Clayton Patterson, and he's only here as a representative of the team of Clayton and Elsa. Right. Uh, they work together as a team. Sorry, uh, you know, we talked to Elsa, and we talked to her on another occasion and so forth, and uh, happy to have been able to present those perceptions. We in conversation invite you to tune in tomorrow. We'll be coming back again. Clayton, once again, thanks a lot to you, both you and Elsa, for documenting this really interesting area of the, of the city so well, and all the best in your efforts and so forth. Your pleasure to have those perceptions. We invite you to tune in. We'll be coming back again tomorrow, as we say. And one more time, Clayton, thanks a lot for coming in. It's yeah, thank pleasure. you. We kind of jumped all over the place. We, we didn't really get forever. on to focus. But, well, uh, we got sort of unfocused, and we talked yeah. about a lot of different things a little differently. But I'm very focused on this Iraq thing and whether oh, as you should where, be. It's very it's dangerous. To, where it's going to be going. And I mean, yeah, I think well, watch your back. You know, think, it's not only well, the front, it's yeah. also the back. And there's a lot of things happening in this country. And there's a lot of things that are being pulled over yeah, with think, this big black yeah, sheet. Yeah, 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 and it's easy to think Saddam and where is he? Mm. Meanwhile, we turn around and, and, and we're locked in. No. Well, you know? that's a danger. Oh, there's one over there. There's one over there. You know, mm. pfft, meanwhile, yeah. they're in the house. Yeah. It's a, it's a very challenging time like never before, it seems to me. You know, that we, we've got this. I uh, mean, we were at 911. I mean, we were all four. I was in, in, into uh, all four going after bin Laden. What did mm. we do? We didn't go after bin Laden. We went and blew up a bunch of things in Afghanistan and then dropped it and left it and moved on. Yeah. We didn't even take care of that. That's a so big mess. So what do you think is going to happen in the election? You know, to be honest with you about what happened in Florida the last time and what's happening now with the electronics and stuff. You think it's going to be close like stuff. that? Between the Republicans and the Democrats? I don't know. Do I think it's going to be honest? Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we're at a really critical time. I think we're at a time that we really should be looking at uh, a lot of these really big questions. That's and what I was Honesty to is, do. A, yeah. is one of those major factors. Mm -hmm. and, uh, just like they lied to get into the war, which it was a lie. Yeah. And nobody's really dealing with it and should be impeachable, but nobody's talking about it. Yeah. And it's okay to misspeak. Yeah. But the thing of it Some is... Some people are. John Dean said it's impeachable. I mean, as an offense. Whether the politics is right to support But John Dean and those people are the people that, that should be talking about mm -hmm. it. These other people should be sticking to the home front and looking about what's happening here. Uh, I don't need Amy Goodman telling me about George Bush. Well, you know, there's enough... other people no, but people put listen to that. I but, mean, no, no, know, but, I mean, but people listen her. to that. Yeah. I mean, that was the problem that we had with the voice at the time, is that he was always... What's the, the, the guy in the Juan voice? Juan Gonzalez. No, the guy in the village voice that does the, uh, the human rights thing on...